postpone singing to God in the midst of your trials. I'm done with you. Keep on singing to God in the midst of what? Christianity is a singing religion. Christianity is a singing faith. That's why as a Christian, you have to make some noise. Hallelujah. Without you singing, your faith cannot arise. Come on. That's why when, before you start praying, begin to sing. Amen. One of the ways you can express your, your gratitude to God is to keep on singing in the midst of your trials. Psalms 147 verse 7 says, Sing out your thanks to him. You see what? Sing out. Your what? And they sing praises unto our God. Amen? Sing it out. Turn those issues into a song. The scripture says, he lit me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my mouth to sing. And now I can sing. Give God some praise, somebody. Hallelujah. Say neighbor. Neighbor. Wherever you are, wherever you keep are, on singing. Keep on singing. Keep on singing. Keep, keep on, singing. on singing. Those neighbors don't want you, keep on singing. Amen. I'm telling you, some enemies go mad. Keep on singing. In that house, they don't like you. Keep on singing. You need to learn to sing out your thanks to God and to praise Him joyfully. Amen. Because there are few things that make you aware of God's presence more quickly than singing your praise to Him. What makes you aware of God's presence, number one, is singing. That's why when we begin to sing songs here, you feel God's presence. You, you, this what me. you didn't touch God. You just feel him. You just feel him, right? You just know he's present here. Just one passion. One purpose. To know you more and more. Hey. When I know you, I find me. All of a sudden, you start to feel the energy, the power, the capacity to wage war against your enemies. Give God some praise, somebody. Amen. So one way that you can express your gratitude to God is to keep singing. Amen? Because it doesn't matter how much talent you have. The Bible urges us in the book of Psalms 100. It says, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Amen. Number two, keep on giving. You love this one now. Aha. Aha. Say, neighbor, you love this one now. Say, neighbor, you love this one. Bad, bad, bad. Keep on giving to God in the midst of your drought. Come on now. In the midst, I don't have time. I'm just giving you a I'm just quick run, run that for you. Keep on giving to God in the midst of your what? The psalmist writes us right in the book of Psalms 50, verse 14. Give an offering to show thanks to God. Give what? To what? Give him what you promise. So it's not just singing alone, but give an offering to what? With me, your offering is a sign of thanks to God. Someone say amen. Amen. Many of you don't understand that. I told you before, gratitude is a miracle-creating attitude. So when you give an offering to God, you are saying thanks to God. Someone say amen. Amen. You see, giving and thanking go together. I told you, I told you last time. You can never have a good Thanksgiving without giving. 
Because thanks and giving go together. Somebody say amen. Amen. Quickly. I'm just giving you, I'm rushing this for you so that we just, number three. Number three. Keep on praying to God in the midst of your pain and uncertainty. The first one, how do you express your gratitude to God? You must keep on what? Singing. Singing. Number two, keep on giving. Number three, keep on praying to God. In the midst of your uncertainty, in the midst of your calamity, in the midst of the unknown. Because God knows even the unknown. Somebody say amen. Amen. So Paul writes in the book of Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7. Look at it. He said, don't worry about anything. I love that part. Say neighbor, don't worry about anything. Don't worry about anything. Say neighbor. Neighbor. I know you worry about Christmas. Don't worry, you will get there, you will get there, you will get there. You will get there, you will get there. Some, 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 some people are coming to church right now, they start to worry about Christmas. They say, I'm saying church started to get scanty now because people are worrying about Christmas. If you take care of God's business, will God will take care, care of your own business. Amen. Don't worry about anything. He said, instead, pray about everything. Keep on praying to God. In the midst of all the uncertainty, in the midst of, 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 of things that you don't even know. He says, tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Very powerful scripture. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. With me, spend some more time praying and thanking God in your prayers. But say, tell him, but say, tell God what you need. It means be specific in your prayers. The easier it is for God to answer. If you are, if you are specific about what you want from God, it's easier for God to answer you. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. So the same thing is true about our thanksgiving. God does not want us to just say, thank you, God, for everything. He wants you to make a list, make a list of all that God has done in your life. And thank you for all he has done. When you make a list of all God has done, you discover there's more to thank God for. Amen. Even your breath alone is, is a place to thank God. Come on now. Oh, you, tell, you thought it was the alarm that woke you up this morning. Okay, put the same alarm clock to a dead man. And see if, and see if, 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 if you wake up. Someone said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are you following me, somebody? Yes, we follow you. The last one, keep on serving God in the midst of discouragement, resentment, and rejection. I'll close with this one. Keep on serving God in the midst of discouragement, resentment, and rejection. Amen. Collect that in. It's very important. God bless you. Very important that you understand this. Life is filled with a lot of discouragement. Amen. People are going to resent you for what you believe. Come on. They will reject you for who you are. But guess what? It's a place for you to keep on serving God. Come on, powerful. The more they reject you, keep on serving God. Yes, Lord. Because you're not serving no man, you are serving God. Amen. People will never accept you. Mark this down. You will try your best to give your best, but still, they'll be very, they're very suspicious of you. Come on now. The Christianity right now is full of suspects. You know, it's, you know last Tuesday, sorry, last Thursday, a sister from Bobby, she testified. She was testifying in the church. She's been with me for, for some years now. Big lady. I knew that some people came around telling them, going from house to house, telling them that she stop going to the church. They must come back to their old church. Their old church that got them broke. They were, this, is not, this is not joking. They were discouraging them, telling them, 
Why are they following this man? This man that comes from Africa. You don't know if, if, if he's a thief. He's been, people are looking for him. For 24 years, people were looking for me. And I'm on the internet. Fools. Why are they following this man? They must come back to the old church. She said to, to, she said to, 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 to this is a pastor, you know? Pastor. Well-known church. So the pastor said, hey, I'm good where I am. God has been blessing me. No matter what you do, there'll be resentment and rejection. Because they're always suspecting your move. But thank God, you know who you are serving. You are serving the Almighty God. You see, I told you, be very careful. Listen, I want you to understand this. I said this on Tuesday here. Many of you didn't get it. Nobody, people's opinion or their feelings cannot stop God from promoting you. Why? Because your God is not from their village. Say neighbor, my God is not from your village. He's not from the village. You don't tell God what to do about me. God has made up his mind about me a long time ago. Amen. So therefore your opinion or your feeling cannot change God from blessing me. Come on now. That's why you have to keep on serving God. Doesn't matter who rejects you. I don't care who rejects you. You keep on serving God. Because you know that God in time will bless you according to your service. Amen. Powerful. Let your attitude be your gratitude. Amen. Keep on serving God. In the midst of discouragement, resentment, Hebrews 12 again, this is our text. Hebrews 12, 28 says, Since we have a kingdom, nothing can destroy. Let us please God by serving him with what? With thankful heart. Because your service to God represents why? A far more superior kingdom. That no amount of resentment or rejection can stop God from blessing you accordingly. Come on now. There's no amount of rejection. You're rejecting, listen. <laughs> when you reject me, or when you believe you are rejecting me, you're actually rejecting yourself. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Since we have a kingdom, nothing can destroy. This kingdom we're talking about, but nothing can destroy this kingdom. Nothing can interfere with the plan of God for this kingdom. Would be if you are serving this kingdom. I don't know how you can be affected by people. Because this kingdom is God's kingdom. Come on. Amen. Amen. It's far more superior. So no amount of resentment that you have against me that will stop God from blessing me. Amen. 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 That's why the more King Saul had resentment against David, the more God protected him. The more God blessed him. The more Joseph brothers hated him, the more God blessed him. So it's like I'm necessary to be blessed. The more you reject me, the more God accept me. Amen? Amen? Again, people's opinion cannot stop God from blessing you. Amen. Because God, the God that the God you serve, the God you believe in, is not your father. That God is not, is not for that village. So those village which can hold the God. Come. Come on, give God some praise, somebody. Fire. <laughs> Therefore, whenever you serve someone else in the name of Christ, you are offering what I call a visible, tangible thanksgiving to God. Somebody say amen. amen. 